there's one thing that terrifies me on this planet beyond anything else, it's the ocean. The deep sea. Yeah, the ocean's And what's going on us. in there, we don't know. But every fucking thing that, boy, I'm gonna have to cut that F out. Everything that happens that, you know, goes down to a certain depth is just horrifying. Everything looks like some Tim Burton nightmare creature. Mm -hmm. And I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. What is it, an anglerfish? I, there's tons of yeah. them that just look like demon hell spawn, like the things of nightmares. So, of course, Casual Geographic has put out a video here oh. recently, The Unspeakable Horrors of the Deep Sea. All right. No, it's not all right. It's not. I, I've always been afraid of the ocean. I mean, I, I get in, but I don't like... I'm not out there just like swimming with not feeling the sand underneath my feet. I've seen two... T no. Well, one TikTok this morning, actually, that just completely made me like turned off by the beach in general. Like, not even the water. But there was this boy who was out with his friends. They, uh -huh. were, they were hanging out on the beach and they decided to like bury him to his neck. Oh God! You know how like people do mm -hmm. that. Um, and then he went home and he started like getting really, really itchy. Well, then the next day he woke up and he had all these like blisters and his skin was like Ugh. full of rashes. And he was like, "What is going on?" Herpes. No, turns out the dog pooped in the sand. The dog had hookworms oh. and apparently like the type of worm that the dog had the humans it doesn't like it doesn't go to their intestines the same way so they burrow and they like go to the top of your skin so he just had like worms yo can you do me a favor can you leave <laughs> what you're doing right now up to casual geographic so now i don't even want like, to touch deal the with you? sand i gotta deal with you and him yeah. this is bad this is problematic please God. Stop. There you go. All right. And now we haven't even gotten into the video. Yeah, there's a little bit of poop. <clears throat> it scared a little bit of the shit out of me. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and bring this video up. <laughs> shit. You heard me say that I'd rather eat 10 pounds of Popeye's biscuits with no drink than ever go out into the ocean. Well, I'd rather ride cross country on a bike with a hot grill for a seat than spend half a second in the deep sea. There's a lot of living nightmares and paralysis demons Look come to life this, if you sink dude. deep enough. Why? And the megalodon kind of like frog. is not one of them. You'll often hear this thing about how the prehistoric apex predator never got discontinued. It's just chilling a step above hell in the abyss. This is Cap for two, well actually three good reasons. One, there just isn't enough food to sustain a 60 foot f you to the natural order. Two, if nature did keep the same jumbo jaws that peaked in the Pliocene, we at least would have seen a body by now. And number three, why do y'all want this to be alive so bad? I promise you there's way worse things down there. Like, I would evacuate my bowels if I ever saw a giga great white shark. But put me in front of a T-posing squid and I'm shitting more bricks than the entire city of Newark. The big fin squid is easily oh, yeah. one of the most disturbing things alive as I'm Look saying. Look at that fucking thing, It's a T-posing predator with arms estimated to max out at just under 30 feet. Scientists believe the big fin catches bodies by dragging those arms, which can be easily 20 times its own body length, along the ocean floor like trawling nets and feeding on whatever poor soul accidentally bumps into them. You're gonna hear me say believe or we think a lot, and that's because we don't know a whole lot about them. Almost every sighting and virtually every specimen studied were either juveniles or paralarvae. We have no way of knowing exactly <coughs> what their final form could look like. Don't. For all we know, this could be Junior, and we just haven't seen Mama Big Fin yet. Who would have thought that just putting elbows on a squid would instantly turn it into the spawn of Satan? Oh, and if you thought the Big Fin was just this slow, passive floating predator, then you're seriously underestimating the ocean's ability to massacre your mental health. And if you're curious, mm -mm. this video was taken about 7,000 feet down in the Gulf of mm -mm. Mexico. But considering they're believed to be the deepest living squids at about 20,000 feet, I have a theory. This is a juvenile, and the big boys are the ones shacking it up down in the crotch of the ocean. But good news, the big fin probably only feeds on small fish and crustaceans. Bad news, there are squids big enough to beef with the biggest predators on the planet. And the biggest predator on the planet that isn't a disgraced former YouTuber is the sperm whale. Which on its own would have to be one of the most traumatizing things to witness during their two hour hunting expeditions down in the deep sea. 
Well, the tankiest no. carnivore on Earth regularly runs fades with the giant squid. And by giant, we're talking about calamari growing to an estimated 40 feet long. Not only are they themselves predators that hunt using 20 foot tentacles, they're opportunistic cannibals that would 100% murk their entire family reunion for some calories. No thanks. Now, nature high key screwed up their character design. They have a donut shaped brain and an esophagus running through it. Meaning, yeah. if they swallow something big enough, not only do they run the risk of choking to a flat line, they can also factory reset their entire personality through <laughs> severe brain damage, which is why they mitigate this by shredding their victims with a razor sharp beak and what is essentially a tongue with teeth, the radula. That beak is such a weapon that you'll rarely see a sperm whale that hasn't been tattooed during a struggle with a giant squid. Ooh. And while the plus size cephalopod usually loses in a war with the whale, they do not make it easy. But the most disturbing thing about them is that eye. Giant squids have the most physically imposing eye in nature, with it being roughly the size of a soccer ball. Contrary to popular belief, huge eyes don't exactly help it see further, but it does mean they're terrifyingly good at noticing objects giving off their own light. Which is a lifesaver, since when their biggest optosperm whale is on the hunt, modern day leviathan disturbs glowing creatures like jellyfish and crustaceans who flash in response. Having eyes as big as our heads means the giant squid can detect and use those flashes to avoid becoming a course. But that also means that if you ever go swimming in the Giga Squid's area code, the flashes you'd create mean that while you might not see it, the same animal that does its own kind dirty would know exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there's only one thing that could be worse than getting stalked by a school bus sized head foot. There's another squid with hunting tactics so spiritually upsetting, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and use a lifeline. The Humboldt squid, also known as the Red Devil. I'm Lindsay, by the way. Hi. Humboldt squid are found in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, typically between 600 to 2300 feet below the surface of the ocean. And their nickname comes from the way they use their pigment cells called chromatophores to communicate. You're probably familiar with what? chromatophores through videos of different cephalopods uh, yeah. using them to change color, A blending into their surroundings, and even dreaming. And Humboldt squid notably use them to turn bright red when they're aggravated, hence the nickname Red Devil. It's very on brand. They're also extremely predatory and have been known to act aggressively towards scuba divers on rare occasion, which becomes a bit more terrifying when I tell you that they can get to eight feet long and 100 pounds. Eight. Now you might be thinking, Lindsay, that is not that big. What about the giant squid and the colossal squid that can both get to like 40 feet long? What? I haven't told you the best part yet. The Humboldt squid is known to live and hunt in groups of up to 10, no, up to 100, no, 1,000, yes, in groups of over 1,000. One thousand squid. That's about 992 many if you ask me. While hunting in these groups, they use their chromatophores to communicate with each other, coordinating movements and attacks, allowing them to take down larger prey, dragging them into the depths wow. until they go unconscious. Scientists have identified some of these communication patterns, as you can see in this little chart, but still don't know exactly what any of them mean. But regardless, that sounds like one of the worst ways to be unalived in the ocean. Oh wait, this isn't a TikTok collaboration. That sounds like one of the worst ways to die in the ocean. So as you can see, whether it's being confronted by a Humboldt block party or squaring up Fuck with a live all action of that, bracket, dude. there are many aspects of the all of that, that end up with you putting your therapist up a tax bracket. And a lot of that's because of this cute little thing known as deep sea gigantism. The idea that the cold temperature, the dissolved no. oxygen, and the lack of pressure from predators allow some animals to escalate to the biggest and most terrifying yeah. versions of themselves. Exhibit A, the Japanese spider crab, which can measure 12 feet across from claw to claw and weigh as much as a human toddler. Only thing worse than a giant spider crab is a giant crab spider. This is an Antarctic sea spider, a dinner plate sized demon what spawn that hunts by sucking fuck? the life out of its prey through its proboscis. Now technically, they're not actual spiders, but also I imagine most people watching technically don't give up, especially yeah. since this one no. looks like it identifies no. as a face hugger. Then yeah. there's a giant isopod, oh. which is essentially uh -uh. an aquatic cockroach big enough to be uh -uh. cradled like a baby. No uh -uh. clue why you would. Uh -uh. And if you're looking for a truly supersized animal crossing, the Who's orfish should be that? on your list. The giant orfish can grow to well over 30 feet long, and there have even been claims of those in the neighborhood of 50 feet. Proof that back in the day when we had stories about sea monsters, they weren't lying, they just didn't have all the names yet. Also, if you caught that pun earlier, we're friends now. But with deep sea gigantism and the endless expanse of ocean acting as a canvas for Shaitan to practice his art, if you dive deep enough, there be monsters. For example, this. What this is that? This is an animal. It's a group of animals joined together in something like a hive mind. So we're not talking about it. We're talking about them. And saphonophores like this come in many forms. Like the Portuguese man of war armed with venom to ensure that the excruciating experience of meeting one is permanently etched into your brain. And there's a Priodubia, a giant saphonophore that can flex a total length of up to 160 feet. And even though it's a collective group of tiny animals, its length could humble a blue whale, making it technically the longest creature on the planet. 
or at best a modest second, since the bootlace ribbon worm has been reported to reach 180 feet in length. Please and it's toxic no. because mm -hmm. the ocean and of course it is, with nasty smelling mucus potent enough to life deprive the crabs it likes to eat. Like I said, whether it's Lucifer's tapeworm or a flying spaghetti creature, there be monsters. And it gets so much worse than a giant worm, because as terrifying as a deep sea is, it's also nasty. And there might not be anything more repulsive than the hagfish. This loogie linguini feeds on no. the rotting corpses and carcasses that sink down into its domain. And since they don't have any actual teeth, the graveyard guppy ah! is sliding into an opening and eating the decomposing body from the inside out. And you would think that something that eats like a casket wouldn't have to worry about getting put on a plate itself. Again, you're giving the ocean too much credit. As self-defense, the hagfish will sweat buckets of slime, a phlegm jacket that's thick enough to clog the gills of anything hungry enough to Ew. F around and unlucky enough to find out. To the point where this is the end game of Come. a truck transporting hagfish what? on the highway, crashing. Now, you've definitely what? seen this picture before, but have you ever stopped and asked yourself what they were doing there in the first place? You remember how I said nothing that eats like a hagfish should ever have to worry about getting eaten? No. Well, no. simple. No. These hagfish, their final destination, were dinner plates in Asian countries such as South Korea where they're considered a delicacy. No. Now, I'm not what? one to judge other cultures, no. but we seem to have a habit of constantly trying to eat all the things nature went out of its way to tell us not to. But yeah. one thing you won't see as a main course is something ironically named after a fruit. The sea cucumber is like the hagfish in that its meal prep consists of all the things we'd normally flush, burn, or bury. All the soul evacuated bodies that sink down to the ocean floor instantly get put on the cucumber's grocery list. It's a literal bottom feeder, and I mean that since they'll also make a meal out of feces. But like with vultures, if Thanos had beef with sea cucumbers, the world would become an infinitely more disgusting place. That's not the only way sea cucumbers contribute to society. They're also often used as a protective bunker for fish and, well, let's just say they break in through the back door. Oh yeah, it's a violation of the highest natural order. It gets worse when a pearl fish decides to have a playdate right next to its prostate. I don't even know if they have a prostate, but you get what I mean. And if that makes you uncomfortable, here's an ad to give you time to mentally prepare for what's next. This adorable no! little guy is known as a basket star. It's a type of brittle star and an echinoderm, which actually makes it a close cousin of the sea cucumber. Dude. If you ever learned about fractals in geometry, then that's why the repeating pattern of branching arms might look familiar. This it's looks also like some US shit on Resident Evil. Twenty billion dollars a year looking into space because the real ET <laughs> is happening right here. Because of the unsightly way basket stars get from A to B, they've also earned the nickname Sea Snakes. I feel itchy all of a sudden. However, even though it looks like something Lucifer would use to pleasure himself, they eat mostly zooplankton and are pretty much harmless for the most part. And honestly, that pretty much describes 80% of the nonsense in the deep sea, only really harmful to your peace of mind. Like take the frilled shark. Having been around for 80 something million years, not Dude. only is the frilled shark a living fossil, it's likely oh nature's rough draft beta version of sharks today. Also, don't let this video fool you. They can grow to a respectable six feet long. That's also, huge. they can be pregnant for three and a half years, which honestly makes about as much sense as everything else down there. And in terms of your mental health, the frilled shark is pretty harmless until you look them in the mouth. The devil's fleshlight has hundreds of needle-like teeth to ensure that anything that gets caught in there doesn't I get don't... a second chance to pursue happiness. <laughs> and for a shark that's been around long enough to have attended Saturn's wedding, I don't know why, but every picture of them looks like they're struggling with their own existence. Yeah. Like I said, though, <laughs> not a <threat> to <laughs> Did you, you see what like he I said in the text? Uh -huh. Therapy ain't cheap, so if you don't want to end up on a couch, don't look a frilled shark in the mouth. But yeah, you'd be surprised at just how many types of sharks you'll find in the same neighborhood SpongeBob got stranded in that one time. Mm. You have 20-foot sleeper sharks that are somehow able to use stealth to just spawn and inhale sustenance like a water Kirby. Speaking of sleepers, in 2015, a Pacific sleeper was recorded in the Solomons Island. Why is that important? Well, its home address was right under an active volcano, proving that if any animal had plot armor, it'd be sharks. Then you have the ghost shark, which, okay, yep, you got me, is a natural Same shark. Those. It's a close cousin known as a chimera. The, the ghost part, though, uh, that's on brand. They kind of remind me of the dry bones fish from Mario. Uh. The ghost nada shark doesn't even have the teeth you'd expect it to have, but instead they have plates that they use to grind up food. But since nature's constantly overcompensating, that one kind of looks cool. have venomous spines that are harmful to more than just your mental well-being. But by far the weirdest thing about way. them, chimeras have a tenaculum on their forehead. A tenaculum is a reproductive organ, meaning this fish has a... It's a dickhead? Yeah, on his forehead. Venom and... That aside, this fish fresh out of Tim Burton's wet dream is actually pretty cool looking. 
And I'm just gonna say it. I think they're cute, and I'm yeah. perfectly fine with standing on that hill alone. However, I don't think you'll find a single soul on it's this like next shark. It's like a shark, shark and a Feast stingray. Feast your eyes on the goblin shark. A oh demon dog looking fish God. with a mouth that snaps like nobody's business. They're rarely seen, but are known to live in oceans all around the world, at depths of up to 4,200 feet below the surface of the ocean, and are estimated to get to 18 feet long, which is really big for a deep sea shark. You might have seen videos online of their jaws just fully ejecting from their brain case no. in a process called slingshot feeding. It's kind of what they're known for. Their upper and lower jaws lunge forward away from the skull, engulfing their prey. I know it probably seems ridiculous and almost alien, but it's actually not uncommon. Most fishes have jaws that aren't entirely attached. One might argue that the goblin shark is the most extreme example of this look until you see a video of the slingjaw wrasse who use suction feeding to snatch up their prey. They look like they have a trombone stuck in their mouth. Goblin but sharks have a particularly it's long snap, and it's not enough. Right. They have sensory structures, pores all over it that help them locate their prey, like squid, fish, and crustaceans. And I am personally grateful I am not a squid, fish, or crustacean. Yeah, goblin's the right word for the only shark in the world with a receding gum line. But you gotta admit, yeeting your own jaw to catch calories is pretty metal, and you're gonna find that a lot of the creatures rolling in a deep have evolved some of the most creative ways of bagging groceries. Probably the most popular is the fish that nearly turned Nemo into an orphan. The anglerfish has two defining mm. personality traits, and one of them is that fishing lure hanging right in front of those life-canceling jaws. That light actually comes from bioluminescent bacteria shacking up inside a modified fin. So when a bite-sized light work swims up to the light thing and it just cops some easy protein, the angler ensures that some fish out there never sees its father so again. Terrifying. The other thing anglerfish got clout for is their mating habits. I'm not gonna get into it, just know that if your marriage looks anything like theirs, you're gonna need both a divorce and a restraining order. And you know what? Intensive therapy on top of that, expert friggin' diciously. Nemo's paralysis demon isn't the only deep sea creature to weaponize light. This distinguished gentleman is known as the stoplight loose jaw, and his defining trait is that it uses a red light to hunt. Which turns out to be a massive Chico, since the longer the wavelength of a what? color, the less energy that wavelength has, and the faster it gets absorbed by water. And since the color red has the longest wavelength out of Same all of them, it's the first one to get absorbed. This is why red light can't reach the deep sea, and the animals living in the abyss that are red actually appear black, which makes it easier for them to hide from predatory smoke. Did not but with know the stoplight that. using red as a searchlight, it's pretty much cracked at this version of hide and seek. Not to mention, since most of the life down there can't even see red, it's able to catch bodies while also not giving up its location yeah. of predators or the prey it packs up. This fish really evolved a whole wall hack and a real life invisibility cloak. Tell me that ain't crazy. That, that is crazy. That freaking overbite ensures that once prey is found, it's lost forever. But why hunt prey when you could just sit and wait for it to come to you? That's the entire playbook for the deep sea lizard fish. Just look at that Cut smile. The... You know he's on the fairiest timing. And at over two feet long, they earned the title of being one of the premier apex predators of the deep sea. As a habitual camper, they lie waiting for life to pass them by before they lunge and use hypodermic needles for teeth to cancel it. Now with apex standing for anyone providing smoke gets extinguished, lizard fish don't hesitate to turn their own kind into coffin fodder. And with the whole point of those teeth being to hold struggling, panicking prey in place, they make sure they don't live long enough it's to like learn their Komodo mistake. Dragon but as fish. much of a therapy build as Gecko Guppy's mugshot might be, it might not even be the worst headshot in the ocean. Not as long as this oh, is still a fact. I, have I don't seen know that. anyone who would waste the oxygen trying to defend this. <laughs> I would. Many say this is a face <laughs> only a mother could love. Well, then maybe he is my son. This is the deep sea telescope fish, one of the most stunning creatures of the deep tropical ocean. I've never They're found in depths like of about 1,600 to 6,600 feet below the surface of the ocean. I can't say that normally. Surface of the ocean. And like you'll see if you look up photos of them online, they are often photographed at unfortunate angles that don't <laughs> do them any justice. They orient themselves upwards, hanging out vertically in the water column as they use their specially adapted eyes to hunt for the silhouettes of their prey. There are two species of telescope fish, Gigantera indica and Gigantera chuni. Don't be fooled by their genus name, which makes them sound like they're gigantic. That is not the case at all. Indica only gets to about eight inches long and chuni a measly six. They are just Aww. little guys. Gigantera actually translates to big tail specifically. They are about half tail. But if they happen to latch onto a snack that's a bit bigger than their own size, that's no problem at all. They underwent a series of skeletal reductions that allow for more room to just fold in half. That's right. They are expert folders. In 1925, scientists found a five and a half inch long viper fish inside the stomach of a three inch long telescope fish. They described it what? as neatly folded, an incredible quality possessed by the lovely telescope fish. Yeah, I'm sure if we gave it Blistex and a hairline restoration surgery, he'd be cute, but that's just me. That being said, there's a lot of pretty dope things just chilling in the deep. Take the barreled eyed fish, the fish with a transparent head that means it can spot ops or prey directly above it, thanks to those two green gummy looking orbs that are actually its eyes. Or the ultra rare giant phantom jellyfish, wow. equipped with 30 foot arms that makes this ET understudy the length of a whale shark. 
And when I say rare, I mean this jelly's only been seen like a hundred times in the history of mankind, so the fact that you're watching this right now is kind of wild. Then you have the deep sea Dumbo octopus that copes with stress by turning itself into a ball to discourage predators from eating it. And if this right here looks familiar, yeah, right to his <laughs> thighs. The vampire squid does the inverse as they'll turn themselves inside what? out and into their own personal panic room whenever they're pressed by a possible predator. I need and it. how about a sea pig for I need that. You? Take everything I said about sea cucumbers and forget it for a second because... Honestly, they're just really cute in a way I can't fully explain. But it's not hard to see what makes the squid instant serotonin. Rosia Pacifica, the, the stubby squid, is actually more like a cuttlefish. It's yeah. also a cuddly fish. And it's nature's apology letter for the sheer trauma it saturated the ocean with. It's actually real, and those arts and crafts looking eyes help it catch prey on a nocturnal schedule. It's also important as an environmental indicator, since scientists will often study their responses to changes in water pH and use that ah. to determine how polluted the water is around them. Which you would think would earn this anime octopus the respect of the scientific community. Well, you'd be wrong, there's a video where some scientists has found one and let me just say not even Hiroshima got roasted that hard. But that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and drink water, hug your moms, go subscribe to Lindsay's channel, link will be in the description. Shout out to Lindsay for being in this video and I'ma see y'all in the next one. It's like they look fake, like Davy Jones. They look like googly eyes. They look like they painted them on. It looks so fake. So some some other aerobic team just came before and just left it here. It's like some little kid dropped their toy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is cute. It's so oh, cute. Oh, He's okay. awesome, though. He so is cute. awesome. Oh, that's a good focus right there. Let's Great focus, Justin. It's freaking me out. Huh? I want to see him. It's a. Do something. He's not gonna move. <laughs> Do something. Flash <laughs> <Yeah. Slash> our lights. <laughs> I wonder if those are the kind of conversations that aliens have when they see us. They're like, look at this really weird looking one. Like, I don't think that one here is cute. way bigger than the other one. What's up with this guy? I like, don't think that flash your think. lights at him. Yeah. yeah. Probe that one. You know. Oh. Anyway, what the. F I'm so glad that they brought it back around and then the back yeah, half of the video was kind of cute. Oh, yeah. Because the front part of that. No, hell no. There's so much. Hell no. Hell no. I have and two this favorites. Is deep sea. I have two favorites. What are your favorites? <laughs> okay, my favorite was the jellyfish. I've never seen that before. The vampire it was, one? Yeah, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then um, the the one that he said needed a hairline restoration. Thought that one was very chapstick. funny looking. Yep. Yeah, he's very cute. Very cute. Um, I didn't like any of them. Oh, you, you like the last one. I, I mean, whatever. I think cuttlefish are so cool. I'm just out. I'm out. I'm out on the ocean. I'm out on all of it. Not even deep sea. Regular sea. Now stick just you, sand. Stick your toes in the, in the, yeah, even the sand of the beach. I'm just like, no, dude. So I also saw a TikTok. No. Um, today, I think. And it was talking about the little tiny fish. Now, now they showed it in the TikTok. You probably won't remember it. Um, but in Finding Nemo, you know how they have like the shark meeting, like fish are friends, mm -hmm. not food. Yeah. Well, under the arm of one of the sharks, there's this little tiny yellow fish. And he's like shaking. And it looks like he's just terrified to be mm -hmm. there. And then he just like Makes runs sense. away whenever he has a chance. At the end of the credits, like the credits are rolling, that is it an ang angle, angle angler, angler fish, fish mm -hmm. was like zip zooming along, and the little tiny fish goes over and its jaws open like that and snack the big scary mean fish. So the theory is he was just there and possibly having withdrawals because he was like shaking but he's like this little you know, so he so was there cute. actually with the sharks and he ran away that's funny yeah I thought wow. that was very funny yeah what a video um i'm gonna have to sit on that one for a while and uh yeah why did we watch that one first Thank you, Casual Geographic, yeah. for putting out this awesome video. And I guess Lindsay, the mm -hmm. chick that was included, did yeah. a good job. Yeah. I think her presentation was pretty cool. She yeah. had a jamming Funny. instrument there. That was cool. Um, seemed like a metal chick. It, it was cool how she had just like a whiteboard yeah, and it popped it up. Like, That's uh, smart. Uh, maybe yeah. we'll check out some of her stuff yeah. since uh, we just got introduced in such a cool way. 
Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed our reaction to this. If you did, you could always give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Hell, you can recommend videos for us to react yes. to if you want to. You can do that down in the comments on our Discord, our Patreon, or our Twitch. We go live on our Twitch every Friday at 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to do live reactions just like this one. And we appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. Hopefully we'll see you next time. Y'all take it easy. See you.